With over 8 million vehicles sold in the last 33 years of existence, the Ford Explorer is a very important vehicle for the Ford Motor Company. I'm here on the show floor of the 2024 Chicago Auto Show, and Ford has given the Explorer a pretty significant refresh this year. So let's go ahead and take a first look. Now with 187,000 units sold in 2023, the Explorer is one of the top selling three row large crossovers you're gonna find in America. And Ford actually says a little over three and a half million are still on the road today. They produced over 8 million in the last 33 years, but still three and a half million are still on the road. So obviously this is a very big deal for Ford. And this car has been around since 1991. It's one of the original family SUVs out there. And as you guys know, it's evolved a lot over the years. We first saw this all new generation back in 2020. That's when Ford first switched over to a rear drive architecture. And you can see for 2025, the design gets a pretty uh, significant tweak. You can see the grille is now significantly larger. This model that I'm showing you here is the performance model known as the ST. Ford has also reduced the trim lines from eight to four. So starting at the base active to the ST line to the ST and of course the platinum. The three, the four different trims will have their own unique grille. So there are three specific grills. This grille you can see is unique to the ST and ST line. You're gonna know it's an ST because it has an ST badge here. The ST line won't actually have the ST badge over there. That's kind of how it gives it a distinction. The headlights are also been redesigned they're a full LED. It has this LED daytime running light, LED low and high beams. You have LED turn signals, LED fog lights. Overall, you can see with this new color, this is called Vapor Blue Metallic. We first saw this color, I believe, on the Mustang Mach-E with the black accents. I think it's a really uh, handsome looking vehicle. So let me know in the comment section below if you guys like the design. I also like how Ford is spelling out Explorer at the front. It kind of gives it more of a premium vibe to it, how it's also blacked out. Uh, but overall, I think Ford has done a fantastic job. Now, in terms of under the hood, I can't pop the hood to show you guys the powertrain, but Ford has, again, simplified the powertrain options. There used to be like four different engine options. The hybrid is now discontinued for, uh, at least for uh, consumer usage. You can still get, apparently, the hybrid if you guys uh, are buying the vehicle in, for a police package, but all Explorers will come standard with a 2.3 liter turbocharged EcoBoost four cylinder developing 300 horsepower, 310 pound feet of torque. The ST is going to be available, or is only going to be included with a four or three liter twin turbo V6 making 400 horsepower and 415 pound feet of torque. That V6 is also going to be optional on the Platinum behind me as part of a $4,800 or $4, Ultimate package that rolls in the V6. But again, most Explorers are going to have that 300 horsepower turbo four with either front wheel drive or of course all wheel drive connected to a 10 speed auto, which Ford, by the way, says the 10 speed has been recalibrated for smoother shifts and of course better performance but we'll have to talk about that as soon as we get one to, to drive later this year now in terms of the side profile you can see this is a heavy refresh so it's not going to change in terms of the overall silhouette of the vehicle but the explorer is on the larger or at least it was on the larger end but now compared to some rivals the new explorer isn't quite as long at 199 inches long in the overall length it has a 119 inch long wheelbase so compared to something like the grand highlander this is about four inches shorter the new traverse is also around six inches longer in general. You can see the wheels for the vehicle. Um, these are a unique wheel that you get to the ST. This is actually a standard wheel on this model. You can get these wheels on the ST line uh, and then you also get upgraded brakes with the red painted calipers. These tire sizes are big. It's a 21 inch wheel riding on a 275 by 45 Pirelli uh, Scorpio all season tire. Uh, you can see big brakes. You have an all independent suspension. The ST also, I believe, gets adaptive dampers, but you cannot get an air suspension on this car. That's something that you can get on this car's platform mate, the Lincoln Aviator. There are obviously some features that Ford has to save uh, for you know, the Lincoln brand. Now, in terms of the wheel arch moldings, you can see, I kind of wish that Ford had made, given it a full paint finish on the ST line. There's some black accents here, black painted side mirrors that are power folding, integrated turn signals. You can get a panoramic sunroof, which is part of an option package. I love how Ford actually puts real roof rails back on the roof. So you can actually put stuff on the roof and add some crossbars and whatnot. And then looking at the rear of the vehicle, you can see the design has also been refreshed. It has a unique look to it where uh, the taillights have been upgraded, where you have kind of like this light bar that kind of goes into the actual tailgate assembly. It doesn't actually connect the two taillights together. I kind of wish I kind of wish that Ford did that, and they also uh, made the Explorer badge light up. But as you can see, it doesn't do that, but it is blacked out. It definitely has a more interesting look to it as opposed to the refresh model. You can see that it's a full LED taillight design. The ST also includes an ST badge at the back here. Uh, the one thing I forgot to mention on the fender arches, if you guys look at the ST line, it'll say ST line as opposed to the ST where it actually has nothing there and it shows an ST badge. Now you can see um, Explorers now all come standard with the tow package. This vehicle will tow a maximum of 5,000 pounds. That's slightly down versus 5,600 pounds on the pre-refresh model. And then the ST line also, or the ST also includes quad outlet exhaust because remember, this is going to be the performance oriented version. I've seen a lot of these Explorer STs with like an exhaust package and like a tune and these things can be pretty, pretty quick. Now, in terms of the uh, cargo area here, the button to open up the cargo area you can see is located right here. 
Uh, and then in terms of the cargo space, I don't have the final figures just yet, but it should be pretty similar, obviously, to the pre-refresh model. You can see all Explorers come standard with a third row. Uh, this third row itself, you can see, is not a power folding mechanism. So there's a strap over there, which I'll have to show you guys uh, when we get into the interior. But uh, in terms of maximum space, actually, I missed that button here. So here's the button to actually open up the third row or unfold the third row. So that's really nice how it's power, which I kind of expected it to be considering this is the top trim. But you can see uh, the third row itself only seats two people across. So if you were looking for an eight passenger version, sadly the Explorer only seats up to seven. This model here you can see seats six because it has the captain's chairs. There are some underfloor storage here, which is usable. In terms of the overall cargo space, I believe the Explorer topped out at around 87 cubic feet of space, uh, which again is pretty usable. But if you're looking for something like uh, a little over 90 cubic feet of space, you're gonna be looking at, for example, the new Grand Highlander or the new Chevrolet Traverse. So Ford, I'm surprised uh, that this new version here, because it's rear drive, rear drive based, it does have a little bit less cargo capacity than the previous generation, but it should still be a very usable mount for those of you who need to carry a lot of stuff. So moving on to the interior of the refreshed Explorer, you can see I've actually switched over to this platinum trim and that's because the Platinum has this kind of lighter gray uh, interior, which definitely has a more upscale look. It also shows a little bit better on camera. Uh, the door actually has a pretty solid sounding funk. Remember, this is built off of the CD6 architecture, a rear drive platform that it shares with the Lincoln uh, Aviator. Now you can see, I wanna talk about the seats because this Platinum grade has kind of like the upgraded leather seat. This is the top of the line version of the Explorer. It has the Platinum badge. These seats are also heated and ventilated, uh, which is nice. They adjust in, I believe, 12 different, ways, 12 different ways. You have three person memory as well on the driver's side, which is a great feature. And then looking at the door panel here, you can see the door panel looks slightly different. This is the last Explorer I, I, I sat in. You can see you have a soft touch material here. You have this wood grain look trim. You have leather here. You have this quilted leather. And then you also have the upgraded Bang & Olsen stereo system, which Ford does a really fantastic audio system. So if you guys are an audiophile, I highly recommend checking that option box. And then you can see on the platinum grade, you even get some upscale touches like a power tilt telescoping wheel. So again, this is something that you tend to find in more of the upscale luxury class but it's nice to see it in a uh, top of the line version of the Explorer. But really the big story with this refresh has to be the interior because even the base active trim of the Explorer comes standard with these massive screens. So you have a 13.2 inch center touchscreen here. This is running the new Ford digital experience software. So you can see it includes wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which again takes up the entire screen which is a great touch. You can also go back to the Ford native system here, which it has new software behind it. So this is essentially replacing Ford Sync 4A, which I think Ford Sync 4A was always a great system, but I also found it to be a little bit laggy and slow at times. This new system here you can see has definitely been improved. You can see there's the GPS function there. That's with the CarPlay showing up, which by the way, if you guys have a navigation system active, now you can basically project the map display into the instrument panel. So now all explorers also come standard with a 12.3 inch fully digital cluster. And you also get the availability of Ford's Blue Cruise system. So this is their hands-free driver assistance tech. You can basically order the Blue Cruise on the top trims for $700 at the time of del delivery. Or if you guys want to add it later, you can pay $75 a month for a subscription charge or $800 a year, depending on you know which, or which you know, plan works best for you. The steering wheel itself is slightly unique on the Platinum where you have this nice perforated leather, which is great. You have the, you know, kind of metallic accented Ford logo here as opposed to the blue oval. There's the little status bar there to kind of check out, uh, to pay attention to your face in case you're not paying attention. The one thing I'm noticing this vehicle is missing, however, is a heads-up display. I'm not seeing a heads-up display on this Platinum grade, which I'm a little surprised because considering, you know, the top trim of this, you know, particular trim in general. In terms of the dashboard materials, you can see there's this beautiful leather stitching that goes across the lower portion of the dash. Up here, you can see the all explorers will have this new soundbar like you know design treatment which if you guys go for the upper trims you go, you'll get the bno sound system you can see there's that wood look trim over here it's a padded soft touch padded area here on the upper portion and then this screen you can see while the bezel is a little bit chunky if you guys remember the old explorer had two different size screens you had an eight inch screen and then you also had a 10.1 inch screen that kind of sat up in a vertical orientation it always looks super awkward so i like how ford has switched it to a landscape uh, orientation and all of them now come standard with the three point or the 13.2 inch display. I'll have to wait until I get one for a full week where I can do more extensive testing, but this also has Google built in. It has Amazon Alexa built in. So you can kind of use voice commands if you guys prefer. The center stack here you can see has uh, still has a lot of hard buttons, which is nice for a volume knob here. You have hard buttons here to control your 360 camera information. You can see there's the full 360 camera. The resolution and quality also looks pretty good. Ford again has been kind of upping the quality for that. And then you have a wireless phone charging pad here, which let me see if it actually fits. It fits my iPhone 14 Pro nicely. Actually, there's plenty of space here so you can actually fit a, a larger phone. This side here would have been nice if it's also a wireless phone charging pad, but sadly it's just a place where you can put your phone. Over here in the center stack, you can see Ford has kind of carried over some high quality materials where you have full leather around here. You can open this up. There's actually a pretty decent bin over here where 
whatever. I can also kind of put my smartphone in there. I can put several smartphones. There's two USB charging ports, an actual power outlet here. Ford's been using this kind of rotary dial selector here for a few years, and it's pretty easy to use. Your drive mode selector is also over here. Uh, you can choose between, I believe, eight or six different drive modes, of course, depending on uh, how you're feeling and you're driving this vehicle. There's some piano black plastic trim here, which I don't love because as you can see, it's already showing scratches and fingerprints and dust pretty uh, significantly. But again, if this is your personal vehicle, that's something you're gonna be kind of keeping clean all the time. There's a padded center console here. If you open this up, you can see it's got a pretty decent amount of storage. Uh, there's also two more USB-C charging ports. So this is a family vehicle. You kind of expect it to have all these different USB charging ports, which is all very important. Above me here, you can see there's a big panoramic glass roof, which lets in a ton of light. I believe it's standard on the platinum trim. It's optional on other trims just kind of a cloth headliner over here uh, which is nice but overall space in here in terms of technology and whatnot I think is also very impressive uh, the heated and cooled seat but controls are located in the screen you also have a heated steering wheel so this system here I'm excited to actually try out but let's go ahead and hop into the back seat area because I want to show you guys the second row which by the way, the second row on this particular model here is, ca is captain's chair. So if you guys want uh, an actual bench seat, you're gonna have to step down to some of the lower trims. But once I get back here and shut the door, you can see the space back here. Ford actually says there's 39 inches of leg room in the second row. So 39 is actually a pretty decent amount, although it is about an inch or two inches less than some of its competitors. Ignore this seat here, it's all the way back. This is where I'd have the seat to drive, uh, which again offers a decent amount of space. You can kind of slide this seat forward and back and you can also recline this seat, which is nice. In terms of the uh, door panel materials back here, you can see there are some manual rubber in those sunshades, which is nice. You have a soft touch material here, more of that beautiful quilted leather with the wood grain look trim, aluminum accented door handle. Padded over here, there is like an armrest or a cup holder right here along with some more door pocket pocket storage which is nice you also have two storage pockets in the each of the seat backs your rear seat climate controls are located here they're also heated rear seats back here the one thing that isn't available however are ventilated second row seats you can find that in some of the explorers competitors you have an actual power outlet here you have a cup holders are over here although those are really teeny tiny cup holders so i'm surprised that ford didn't want to give you a bigger solution there uh, in terms of the headroom space you can see your rear seat vents are here and then when i have the seat in this position, I'm kind of leaned back. My head does come pretty close to the roof at five foot seven. So obviously this panoramic sunroof is taking up a little bit of space. There's also a nice little pass through to get into the third row here, which by the way, the third row, let me guys show you guys how to get back here. Now to get back here, you basically push this little top button. You can see that will essentially catapult the seat forward. Now that seat is folded down. So I'll kind of crawl my butt over into this seat here and show you guys what the space is like. Now, in terms of the space, Ford says there's around 32 inches of legroom back here. 32 inches isn't a ton of space. Let me go ahead and see if I can pop this back open. Sadly, I can't do it, I guess, while I'm sitting in here. Uh, but if you bring this seat back, you can see um, it's actually not bad in terms of the space, but this is with the seat all the way back or all the way or not all the way back. So if I push the seat all the way back, it is going to eat into my legroom space. Now, if you look at some competitors, they offer between two to four inches more le rear seat legroom in the third row. So that's something the Explorer is starting to show a little bit, you know, it's age, but in terms of materials back here, it's all hard touch plastic. You have two USB-C charging ports back here. Headroom space is actually pretty good though, because of this kind of, you know, car carved out area. There's also rear seat air vents in the third row, which some competitors don't even offer that. So overall the third row, while it can can only seat two people across is certainly still usable uh, for those of you who need to actually put adults back here um, you probably should check out some of the competition but again for kids the explorers third row is certainly still going to be a really nice option so before we wrap up this video, I thought I'd show you guys really quickly what the platinum grade looks like, because remember there are three distinctive grills. This is the look that you get with the platinum grade. You can see it kind of has these kind of metallic accents in the actual horizontal bar here and the actual insert for the grill. I think it looks really cool. Although I think for me personally, the ST and ST line is probably what I would choose. You can see it has the same kind of similar front end with the LED headlights. The side profile of the platinum, this one here is white, which I think is probably a choice a lot of people are gonna choose. You still get these black painted side mirrors and then you can see the wheels. These are the 21 inch wheels that you get with the platinum grade. Now you can get the platinum with a different wheel, I believe, and you can also get a black painted roof. That's what I forgot to mention over in the ST. The roof that you can get black painted is around $4,800 extra, which is pretty pricey, but it kind of gives the Explorer a more unique design to it because I don't believe you can find a black painted roof on any other vehicle in this segment. So that's certainly something unique. If you guys are interested in purchasing the new Ford Explorer, you can actually order these at your Ford dealership now. And Ford says they'll, avail they'll be at dealerships in Q2 of this year. So you're gonna have to wait a few more, a few more months. Pricing has already been announced. So because Ford has done away with the base trim, they've gotten rid of four different trims. The base active trim with front wheel drive is gonna start at just under $40,000, around $39.9. Add $2,000 if you guys want all wheel drive. 
The ST line is going to be about $5,000 more. I think that's probably what most people are going to choose. It's going to give you some upgrades in the interior, some upgrades in terms of the exterior design. Uh, the platinum grade that you're seeing here is going to start at around $51,000. The ST over there is the most expensive trim starting at around $55,500. Now, of course, that's the base price. Ford tends to offer a ton of option packages as well, like the panels, the twin panel moonroof is an optional charge. I went to Ford's website to build the, the vehicles and you can easily top these out at over $60,000. So kind of keep that in mind. However, with 400 horsepower under the hood and a rear drive architecture, the Explorer certainly is one of the sportier driving vehicles out there. But if you guys are looking for something a little bit more space on the inside, there are some competitors out there that do have more space efficiency with their packaging. Uh, so kind of keep that in mind. For Redline Reviews here at the 2024 Chicago Auto Show, I'm Sofian Bay.